Everything. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you want to have your seat, have your seat. We can worship him from our seats. But I guarantee you, when you look back over your life, sometimes you just have to stand up. Come on, somebody. Run down the aisle. Run down the street. Run around our lake, our pond out there. Come back, do another lap. Come back in. If you talk about your testimony, what God has brought you, am I right about it? If you really talk about what God, you can run for a minute. Run through the block area they got blocked down here. I'll run through that too. But he's so good. He's so good. Evelyn, he's so good. He's so good. Twenty, he's so good. Mama, he's so good. I'm gonna keep saying it so y'all catch on to it. It's like Wi-Fi. Brother, he's so good. He's so good. He's so good. My brother and my sister, the Colognes, he's so good. Chloe. Baby, he's so good. All the way back there in the back, he's so good, somebody. He's so good. He's so good, Ricky. He, he's so good, Ricky. He's, he's just that good to me. Brother Leroy, he's good to me. Patrick and Batonda, he's just that good to me. And if anybody look back over their life and let God know you've been just that good. You're so good. I'm not talking about a house. I'm not talking about a cop. I'm talking about the fact I won't know. I opened up my eyes this morning. I got out of bed on my own two feet. I was able to wash my own face. He's so good. And even if I couldn't do it at all, he's still good. Even if I couldn't wash my face, even if I couldn't get out of my own bed, as long as he opened up my eyes, God, you're good. McCowan, he's good. Ministers, he's good. Deacons, he's good. He's so good, y'all. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. I want you to look back over your life and tell God right now, say, it was you. It was you. It was you. It wasn't me. It was you. It was you. Sharon, it was him. It was him. It was him. It was him, y'all. It was him carried you through. He did that. He did that. Raising toddlers. Raising a teenager, he did that. God did that. God did that. God did that. Anybody got a special needs child in here? God did that. God still has them and covering them. God did that. He did. Anybody recovering from an addiction? Whether it's a drug addiction, a sexual addiction, and you still here, God got your hole in your right mind. You lost a loved one recently. God did that. God did that. I just told one of the choir members, she's a living, walking miracle. God did that. Who Jesus. Who Jesus. Through all I have gone Lord, it was See you, Twitter.
See, we used to have church in a chapel at the funeral home. I already know what having no music. It was you. <laughs> it was you pulling me through. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Somebody say it. It was you. Lord, yes. say it. Praise and worship team, I want you to tell your testimony, say, through all, I am all through, Lord, it was you. You got to tell your testimony now, tell your testimony, say, through all, I am all through, Lord, it
You're not supposed to be here, but. We're going to say it one more time. Bring it all the way down. Through it all. Everybody say. situations, your childhood, high school, college, your career that you're in now and what you've been through. I'm like, just throw your hands up and say, it was you. It was you, it was you, it was you. Say, it was you. I, ooh, y'all sound good. It was you. Pull it. It was you. It was you. Last time all around the building. We're trying to let it go, y'all. It was you pulling, pulling me through. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. It, it was you. It was you. Yeah. Pulling me through. Say that, Shanika. Say it again, Shanika. Say it again. It was you. It was you. Say it.
walk out.
God is good. Abba Father. Abba Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we welcome your spirit in this building this morning, God. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the praise, God. We come collected this morning to Shabbat, you Lord. God, you is a good God. God, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, God. You is on time, God, God. It may not look like it, but God, you still in charge, God. All this in turmoil is going on around the world, God. Not only in Haines City or in the state, God, but it's going on all over the world, God. But God, we look to you, God. For you is a, a fixer, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for life, health, and strength this morning, God. We thank you how you laid us down last night. And this morning, Lord, you woke up with the finger of your love, God. With the blood running wrong through our veins, God. God, we thank you, Lord. We glorify your name with God. God, you are worthy, God. All by yourself, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We lift you this morning, God. Like never before, God. Because you was the on time, God. And you would never leave us nor forsake us, God. You already told us that, God. Because you are our Father, God. You are our God and we are your people, God. God, we want to thank you, Lord. We glorify your name, God. God, we know that you sit high and you look low, God. We part of the royal family, God. We lift your name, God, to the highest, God. God, we pray for each and every one that gather here this morning, God. God, look down on this young ministry, God. Not only this young ministry, God, but every ministry that open your name this morning, God and confessing that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is the only way out, God. If we look to you, God, God continue to bless this young deacon board as you were happy to be, God. God can live to every, every ministry in this young church, God. God, look down to every auxiliary, God. God, we glorify your name that we continue to do your will, God. God, touch the pastor, God, the one who have been here, for some 35 years, God. Look down on that first lady in their family, God. God, continue to bless each and every one, God. God, we do glorify your name, God. So have your way in this young building today, God. Do what you want to do as long as you want to, God. As long as you in the spirit, God, we will be under your care, Lord. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, God. We give you all the glory, God, because you're worthy of all our praise, God. God, have your way, God. God, we need you. We can't do anything without you, God. God, look down at the one who's going through bereavement, God. God, look down at the one who's behind the prison wall, God. God, look down at the one who's in the convalescent, convalescent home, God. Look down on the one who is in the hospital, God. Touch him in a special way, God. God, look down on Deacon Jones this morning, God, as he lying on the bed of affliction, God. God, touch his body this morning, God. God, let him know, God. Let him know that you are with him, God. God, touch him in a special way. He needs you right now, God. For he's 96 years old, but God, you, you still in charge, God. You still got your hands on him, God. God, God, touch him, God. Give him comfort, Lord, like no other can, God. God, we know that you're there, God. Not only Deacon John, but any other person that is lying on the bed of a Christian, God, touch their body right now, God, in a special way, Lord. You are able to do all things but fail, God. You can make the impossible possible, God. You already told them, God. You have overcome this world, God. God, you have overcome the world, God. There is no sickness, God, that you cannot heal, God. So not only Deacon John, but God, there's others also, God. God, let them know that you are in control, God. Now, God, we do give you all the glory and all the praise, God. And God, we, we have heard our last song, God, and prayed our last prayer, God. Find us a home somewhere in thy kingdom, God, that hands have not built, God. God, we thank you this morning, God. And we do give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Someone 
Someone have a Toyota Corolla, burgundy, their lights are on. Toyota Corolla, burgundy, lights are on. Colossians 4 and 6 says, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Good morning, Parkview. I'm Sister Evelyn Walker, and these are your announcements for today. The Resurrection Day program practice is today immediately after church service. It is very important for you to come and acknowledge what your part in the program will be. There's still room for you to be included in the skit, to rap, to recite a speech, and other areas as well. However, today is the last day to be recognized as a participant in this program. So come down front after service today and be prepared to make this a spirit-filled event for Resurrection Day. Attention Parkview parents and students. Our third quarter student recognition will be on Sunday, April 14, 2024 at our 11 a.m. service. This is the time when we give special recognition to those Parkview Christian Center students who've excelled in their academic and other curricular achievement during the third quarter. Recognition forms will be available at the scholarship desk. Please complete this form in its entirety along with the supporting documentation and submit to Sister Maureen Williams no later than Sunday, April the 7th. No forms will be accepted after the due date, the scholarship ministry. Calling all families, the second annual Haines City Children's Literacy Festival will take place on Saturday, March 23rd from 11 a.m. till 4 p.m at Lake Eva Park, located at 555 Ledwith Avenue in Haines City. This festival will showcase children's book authors, kid entrepreneurs, educational businesses and organizations, hands-on STEM workshops, and more. We are also excited to welcome educational children's music artist, Jack Hartman, in concert. This is a free event, and we hope to see you there. The Singles Ministry invites all single adults, male and female, to join us for an evening of fellowship on Friday, March 22nd at 7 p.m. in the Small Sanctuary. This fellowship will be engaging, encouraging, and empowering. Again, that's Friday, March 22nd at 7 p.m. in the Small Sanctuary. For more information, please contact Minister Maltzby. Now, a message from the scholarship ministry. Attention PCLC High School students. Save the date, Saturday, April 27, 2024, from 10 a.m. to noon. Please join the scholarship ministry in the former sanctuary for career day. Prepare for your future by meeting the professionals. Lunch will be served. Please sign up at the scholarship desk today. I repeat, sign up at the scholarship desk today. Thank you, the scholarship ministry.
Parkview, please send all announcements Tuesday evening before that Sunday to announcements at pclctheview.org. Be sure to spread the word about our monthly food giveaway here at Parkview. Text PCLC to 833-600-9222 to sow a seed into the ministry. Also, you can view every service live from anywhere when you subscribe to Pastor Henry Babers on YouTube. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss the word. And to our visitors, on behalf of the Parkview Christian Life Center family, we welcome you and thank you for joining us. God planned for you to be right here and we know he has a word for you that will change your life. As a reminder, all services are recorded, so we ask that you please limit your movement during the sermon. Please make sure all small children are accompanied to the restroom by an adult. Also, it is very important to turn off or silence all cell phones. And please, no eating or drinking in the sanctuary. Let us respect God's house. Now prepare yourself for the word of excellence and to receive the kingdom vision and provision God has for you. Again, I'm Sister Evelyn Walker, your announcer. Thank you, and remember, this is the year we speak life. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. We magnify you, Jesus. Thank you again, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He always, the Lord is always showing himself strong and mighty in our lives. Every chance we get, we should praise him. And not just in private, but praise him publicly. Let, let the lost, let the world know that you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our God. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. All right, we have a, uh, a couple of things I want to do. I just saw our city commissioner, uh, uh, Morris West, he's here, and I want him to come, and he's going to just share for a few minutes. He's making rounds this morning as he is running for our city commissioner seat uh, two, two, three, seats three. So um, been there for a long time too. Been there for a long time, doing a great job. So I'm going to have you come and just share uh, with the congregation. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God is good all the time. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord just one more day. You know, I didn't know what the day may, my journey of the day may hold when I woke up this morning. You know, I'm thank God for waking me up and taking me through another day. You know, the word said, and I just walked in, it said, 2024, we speak wisdom, we speak spirit, we speak everything. You know, I want to sit here, sit here and tell you all that I, I am a, a city commissioner, a current city commissioner. And I've been very active for the city of Haines City, and I want to continue to be active uh, for the city of Haines City. And things that are about to come, Haines City is about to explode, you know. So we're, we're doing great things in Haines City. So I want to continue, and I want you all to, on April the 2nd, if you don't mind checking that box that says Morris West, north, south, east, and remember West. Because I am the one that's going to keep Haines City moving forward, and that's what I want to do. Help is on the way. I know you all realize and see all the traffic problems that we have in, our, in Haines City. 
but I can assure you that we got some alternative traffic problems that we getting ready to solve. One is the SunRail that's we come into Haines City to give you an opportunity to drive, get on the SunRail. And you'll be able to take that SunRail from Haines City all the way to Daytona Beach almost. So those are some of the things that I want to sit here all morning and tell you, but I just want you to just keep me in that seat because I've been actively serving. You know, Haines City needed some additional funding. I went to Tallahassee four times, okay. four times to get Haines City some additional funding. We got six, I got $6.6 .6 million to improve our lift station and our water for Haines City. So things are on the way. But I often tell people, don't vote for me for my, because my, I'm your friend. Don't vote for me because I'm your neighbor. Don't vote for me because you know me. Vote for me because of my leadership. To keep me there. And I pray that God will do great things in 2024. And thank you for allowing me to say a couple of words, Pastor. And thank you to the congregation of Part View. I love you all. And just stay prayed up. Stay prayed up for me and my family as we go through. Scripture said go through the valley, the shadow of death. We're just going through, but we're going to get through this here, okay? Thank you all so much for allowing me to be here. Thanks, sir. Amen. You know, every, every time I think about the right to vote, it's such a privilege. Amen? Uh, a lot of people who complain never vote. Amen. I, that, if you don't vote, you don't have a right to complain. Amen. Because your votes, your votes speak much louder then you're complaining. That's right. Amen. Amen. So be sure, you know, especially we as African American, we ought to, oh, have mercy. All we had to go through just to get the right to vote. And now we just, a lot of us just take it like for granted. But some people paid a high price uh, for everyone to have this right. So take advantage of it and be sure to vote. Amen? Amen. To God be all the praise and glory. Uh, well, let us keep Brother Yancey and maybe some others uh, lifted up. I was looking back in the media and he's not there. He is um, uh, at the hospital. He's got to go through a procedure. I won't say exactly because uh, what it is. I do know, but you know, I, I won't say because I had not been given permission to say. But um, uh, let us keep him in prayer. And, um, and any, anyone else, um, I imagine there are other members that are going through, and certainly we have you lifted up. We are a church family. Amen. And uh, a family prays together. Amen. And they lift and care for one another. So if you know a member of this, of this local church that's going through, and I don't know about it, uh, just you knowing ought to be enough to show your love as a member and then inform me and I'll do my very best to make a call or a visit or something. They would know that I, I, I got the message. Amen. All right. To God be all the praise and glory. We are going to get our hearts and our mind ready um, for our giving, our tithes and offering. Let me, uh, well, we, let's give God for the overtop giving. We have, we have went past 100,000. Give God a praise for it. Amen. We're, we're at $101,748, if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere up in there, 101. Amen. And uh, I know many of you wasn't uh, ready to give on the third Sunday in February, but uh, those of you that wasn't at that time are still giving. You're laying it right on the altar. And um, I don't know if there's anyone here today that have their overtop giving seed, sacrificial seed ready. But if you, if there's someone, lift your hand so I can see you, so I can ask you to come up. Anyone have their overtop giving today? Amen. Nobody have it today. All right, well, one, one person way back there, the, you, I believe that's somebody else. If not, Amen. Give it to the, you're going to give it to the usher. She would bring it. Amen. All right. To God be the praise. Give God pray that Sister Richardson. Amen. God bless you. 
to God be all the praise and glory. We are blessed. God has really showed his favor uh, upon, see, I knew there was somebody else. Amen. Very rarely if there's just one, but if there's one, that's enough. Amen. Amen. All right. There's, oh, y'all just didn't want to, maybe I didn't see y'all. Okay. Y'all didn't hold your hand up high enough or something. All right, I see him. All right, I see you over there. All right. Now, uh, we're going to get our hearts and our mind prepared to sow our seed, our tithes, and our offering. Uh, come on up. I'm going to pray before over these seeds before we do the tithes and the offering. Blessing. Amen. Glory be to God. Father God, we ask your blessing over the seed that has been sown by faith. And God, these seed is a, they are sacrificial seed, and the greatest sacrifice has that has ever been given. You gave us the example of your Son shedding His blood and dying on the cross. So God, you know about sacrifice, and oh, how you bless us when we stretch ourselves for your kingdom. So we ask your blessing on upon these seeds. And show yourself strong and mighty. In Jesus' name, let your heart say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Come on, take it. All right, let us prepare our hearts and our mind for our tithes and offering for the morning. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. We understand everything that we have at the cost of Jesus, even the breath in our bodies. So it's easy to give back when so much has been given to us. Amen. All right, let us repeat the tithing pledge. I am a tither, and I support the kingdom of God on this earth. I believe that the Parkview Christian Life Center is doing kingdom business, and therefore I plant my seed in great ground that will bring forth prosperity in every area of my life. I have no time for doubt or doubters. I am taught to obey the word of God so that the blessing of Christ shall overtake me and the favor of God shall find me and my cup shall run over. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's seed time. Amen. I was looking around this morning. Is Brother Carter here this morning? If he were, he, if he is, I need to get his attention.
Stretch your hand towards us, see. Father, again, we thank you that we are sowers in your kingdom. Your word have declared that wherever seeds are sown, they must be in harvest. Father, we sow with an expectancy that you will continue, Lord God, to use our seed to do kingdom work. So that we not store up treasures on earth, Lord God, where moths and worms could eat it, but treasures in heaven. So that on that day, Lord God, you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. It's in Jesus' name we pray and the church say, I just want to make you aware that on this Saturday, the Dr. Jesse Owens Music Academy of Fine Arts will be having the BC Saka Music Festival here at Parkview. They will be featuring Negro spirituals, the old Negro spirituals. So if you really want to be blessed in a unique way, because this is almost a lost art form. Come on out and join us in a wonderful celebration of spirituals, the way they were sung when it was just the piano. God bless you. No, the devil didn't do that. That was these pants. <laughs> Come on, give God some praise in here.
Let me tell you something about the blood. It's hard to get out the blood. It is hard to let that go. Knowing that the blood will never lose its power. Because it reaches to the... Yeah, we got some Baptist people. And it flows. And it will never, ever, ever lose. And for the young people, Chloe, period. Never. How many know that God is awesome? Tell somebody beside you. Now, are you ready for God's word? Tell somebody else, say, I'm ready for God's word. Now shout back to me, say, I'm ready for God's word.
God. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I am weakened, forever he will reign. My God is awesome, he can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. Worship him right there. Bless his holy name. Father God, in the awesome, mighty name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, King of glory, Lord strong and mighty. Lord, as we stand here today before you, right, at this very moment, we acknowledge there's none, there's none like you, God. Hallelujah. Your love exceeds our expectation. Your love look beyond our own faults and it sees what we need. Your love is the reason we are breathing today. And the blood is running warm in our veins. Your love is the reason our hearts are beating on time. With you, God, all things are possible, but without you, God, nothing is possible. Let your word flow, God. Let it just flow, God, with no hindering spirits. And God, man is just a vessel, and I'm just a vessel that you speak through and use. That's what we are before you. Your instruments. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you right now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, let every heart say amen. Amen, amen. Let's go John, to, today to John chapter, um, John chapter 5. Amen. And John chapter 5, let's look at verse 17. Amen. Y'all there? Amen. All right. First something say, but Jesus answered, My father worketh hitherto, hither and I 
<clears throat> and I work. Therefore, the Jews sought uh, no, the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. One of the biggest, um, and you know, we're about to go into uh, the resurrection, Palm Sunday, late Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, um, the following Sunday, the fifth Sunday of this year. Uh, great resurrection, the power of Jesus getting up from the dead. <clears throat> One of the biggest problems that most of the Pharisees and religious leader had with Jesus, the Sanhedrin and the high priest they had with Jesus was he could not, in their mind, he could not be equal with God. And the whole crucifixion was based on the fact that, you know, they kept trying to find fault. Yeah, just take a little base out. Uh, just trying to, they kept trying to t uh, find fault with Jesus. Amen? And they brought so many false accusers in. And as they were bringing those um, <clears throat> false accusers, Y'all work it out. <laughs> Amen. Uh, as they kept bringing them in, no, nothing was sticking. Nothing. One accusation, false accusation after another. They were trying to find something that they could crucify Jesus, a good reason. But they couldn't find it. Can you imagine people coming in and saying, do you, do you have anything on him? They said, well, he did this. And they said, man, get out of here. You right here talking about he opened up your eyes. We need something that would justify um, Pilate being able to say we can crucify him. And I mean, all these people came in and nothing was sticking. Nothing was of justification for them to go forward with execution. And finally they asked Jesus, they said, well, tell us who you are. And he says, faces of them, I am the son of God. Now he, didn't, he wasn't saying I am a son. He said, but I am the son because all of us are sons of God. Women and men, we are called sons and daughter of God. But we are not the son. And Jesus said, I am the son of God. Now, when he said that, what he was doing was making himself equal with God. Equal meaning he is God on the same level as the Father. The two are equal. And so they cried out then that he had blasphemed and he's word their crucifixion. How can you say you are God and you and the Father are equal? And so they started. They started the march toward getting him to Pilate because the Jews themselves didn't rule the law. The law didn't give them the right to crucify a man. They can make accusation, but they wasn't the Roman government. The Roman government would have to give the verdict. So they went to Pilate with this strong accusation that they felt like he had blasphemed. Y'all keep working on it. <laughs> 
that he had blasphemed. Now, that don't mean I'm losing my focus. Y'all just stay focused. It's saying that he had blasphemed. Pilate, he's worthy to be put to death. Why? Because he says he's God. On the same level, equal, same quality, same righteousness and holiness as God, the Father. And they just looked at him and said, well, that's Mary, baby. We know his mother. Now, how are you going to say he's, he's God? He, he was born uh, from Mary, came from Mary. You know, they get all kind of cross up. They were, they were reading the word, but they wasn't understanding what they were reading. Because Isaiah had already said, a virgin shall bring forth a child. They knew, they read it. Now here they marching toward the crucifixion because Jesus told the truth. He is the son of God. Here's what a lot of religions do today and you gotta be very careful. A lot of religion, and I want you to look at this verse again, put that verse back on the screen. We gotta really look at it. Look at verse uh, 18, and it says, therefore the Jews sought the more to what? Kill him. Why? Because not only had he broken the Sabbath, that was bad enough for them, but said also that he was, whoo, he was, that, said that he also, but said also that God was his father making himself what? Equal. Equal with God. Now, a lot of religions come to your doors, and especially those who are uh, with the watchtower and, and a lot of, more of them, and they'll say, um, yes, Jesus is the son of God. What they mean, he is a son but they are not saying that he is equal. What you have to ask people, are you saying he's, don't tell me he's the son of God because you're trying to say all those are sons. Are you saying he's equal with God? Because if you're not saying he's equal with God, then what you're basically saying, he was just like one of us. Now, if he is just like one of us, we are in trouble. Because if that's all he was, which he wasn't, he was the son of God, equal with God, then tell me, if he's one of us, we can't die for each other. Amen. Amen. No matter how much we love each other, we can't die for each other's sin because we are sin. Sin can't die for sin. Amen. Can you imagine as much as our mother, if a mother really loved their child, can you imagine going to your mother and say, I need you to die for me so I can get, go to heaven. We know our mothers cannot what? Die for us. Why can't they die for us? They love us. Because they are not the son of God. Neither can your father, your children, your spouse. Nobody, no human being ever came to the earth declaring I am, I am God. I am equal with God. I am the Father and I are one. Jesus made this claim and it was true. And how do we know it's true? If you ever truly been born again. Come on, church. It's one thing to hear people talk, 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 talk. Everybody, every religion going around talking about how great 
their God is and what they God did. But one thing your God did not do, he didn't die. And three days later, come on now. I never hear y'all tell that story. Y'all never talk about he died. And three days later, he got up from the grave. They went to search for his body and all they found was angels at the tomb. And they said to, uh, why y'all, what y'all, what you doing at the graveyard? Why are you seeking a living at the graveyard? Amen. You don't go to the graveyard looking for living people. You go to the graveyard looking, people are dead down there. And so the angels say, he is not here. He is alive. He is, he's risen. So the key is, he is equal with God, the same as God. Now, why is that so important? Because, and, and what is all this coming up the next couple of Sundays about? He's equal with God. Then he humbled himself and came obedient unto the cross, the death of the cross. He humbled down. He's equal with God made himself of no reputation, became a man, and walked among us as the God-man. God among man. For we can see him, touch him, handle him. But it really got a lot of people upset. It really did. It got them so upset because how can anybody be God? How can they be walking among us? And especially the way he came, he didn't come like they expected him. If you're God, you ought to come in royalty. You ought to come in power. You shouldn't come as a carpenter. You shouldn't be born to ordinary people. He didn't fit their criteria or agenda. He just didn't fit in with what they had imagined. And he surely didn't fit in with their program. Amen, somebody. I mean, he messed up their program. First thing they said that you're breaking the Sabbath day. Now, Jesus just didn't fit in at all. See, God didn't come to earth to fit in with us. Amen. We have to fit in with him. See, sometimes we think that God has to fit in on our agenda and our program and the things we got on, going on in our life. God came to interrupt our lives. Amen. Because our life was not going according to the will of God and the purpose of God. He came in our lives to say, well, I didn't come to fit in your agenda. Don't pray, don't pray me into what you want. Don't try to get me to fit into what you want to do. God said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. We were looking the other day and um, this, 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 this Jesus, as he came, he had, uh, he had, he had two or three main agenda, two or three main agenda to die for us and that we may receive the Holy Spirit. Listen, he came to say it with me, to die for us, that we may receive what? The Holy Spirit, amen. And then after we receive the Holy Spirit, we become light in this world. We, we was looking at, um, and the devil been so busy this week, trying to throw me off, amen. Do y'all know that sometimes the devil works so hard to try to throw your pastor off, the pastor off. You know, and the reason he worked so hard to throw me off, if he can throw me off as your pastor, then you don't get fed like you should. Or you don't get led like you should. So when uh, uh, you home and in your spare time, well, not spare time, you ought to understand how the kingdom of God works too. It, it works by the body always keeping the head lifted up. 
Did y'all hear what I just said? I mean, really do. So he, 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 he been trying this week, but just like again, a loser can't win. Y'all come on, say it with me, devil. A loser can't win. Y'all to remind the devil sometime of that. Devil, you lost. He can never win. He lost. So he didn't win. So we were looking at um, the scripture. I think that was Wednesday night. Well, the man as Jesus said uh, about uh, the commandments. And he said, what? Uh, and Jesus said, matter of fact, uh, I think it was in John 831. That was it. Yes. Don't be thinking now. <laughs> 835. 831 to 35. All right, let's go there. Praise the Lord. Y'all, uh, well, see, it's about 16 of y'all that was here. And, well, don't worry about it. Amen. All right. Praise God. Well, we was, we was, um, let me, because I, I got it, but I didn't see it. Let me quote it. They asked Jesus, they said to Jesus, they said um, about the commandments. Jesus said unto them, he said, all the commandments hangs on these two things. Are y'all listening? You shall love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy what? Mind. All thy heart, all thy mind, all the soul. Then he said, the second one is like unto this. You shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. All right, so... He said, he said, these two hang all the law. Now, please get this. This is why I started with Jesus being the son of God. He said, these two hangs all the law. Love God first. Everyone say, love God first. Love God first. Now, now, listen very carefully. We say things like, I know I will love God first. We say it. I mean, we actually just let it flow out of our mouth. And we can say things and not let it sink in our spirit like it should. Because if, if you were to ask somebody today, should you love, who should you love first? And we're going to say who? God. Come on, say it loud. God. All right. If I ask you again, as a child of God, who should we love first? What are we going to say? God. All right. That is true. And it's so important that we know it's true, and apply it above everything else because nothing else is going to work in this world until you love God first. So the focus of a human being should be like, the first thing I'm going to do, see, we get it all backwards. The first thing we should say is I'm going to fall in love with God. I want to know God and keep growing in God. He is the first priority spiritually in my life. Because if he's not, then every other thing I build in my life, sooner or later, is going to fall apart. Amen. Then he says, in other words, you really cannot truly love anything, I said the word truly, or love anybody until you first love God. That's why... Jesus said, the first thing a person must do is love God. Because after that, now, see, until it hit us, we go out and try to love people. We try to love our family, and we do our very best in our natural. Sometimes it seems like it's good enough, too. But what God is saying, 
True love, true understanding, wisdom, and knowledge come from your relationship with God. And if you, if you fall as you go on in life, if you love God, make him a priority, if you fall in any area of your life, whether it's business, relationship, even have a health problem, if you fall, you fall back on love. You fall back on the love of God because he's first. He's the foundation. So if I'm having a health problem, when I fall, I fall on love. If I have a relationship problem and it's not going right and we have to go separate ways, when my heart is broken, it fall on love. Amen. If I'm having a financial problem and I don't know how my bills are going to get paid and I wonder how I'm going to make it, when I'm about to fall and when I finally fall, I fall on love. If your relationship is built on anything else and you try to fall on a job you lost, it ain't nothing to fall on. You try to fall on a person that left you, you hit the floor. There's nothing to fall on. See, if we love God first, we always got somewhere to fall. And somehow we think we can turn it around. Now watch this. God said you got to love him first. He said everything hanging on love because if you can love him, you can love people. It's impossible to say you love God and not love people. If you really love God, you pick up the character of God, and God is love. The only way you can love people is you got to love God. If you can love God, you can look, you can look, you can look over some stuff. Just like the love of God have me looking over some your behavior, because your behavior is not dictating my action. The love of God is dictating my action. So Jesus said, first of all, loving God is first. Now listen carefully. Then he says, the second one is like unto this. He says, the second commandment is to love thy neighbor as thyself. It's like unto the first one, but it's not the first one. Because the first one call you to look, calls for you to love God, right? Once you love God, you can love people. But if you try to love people first, you may not love God. Okay, some, I, I believe y'all got it. See, you can get married and love each other, but the both of you, neither one of you may love God. Amen. But if you love God, you'll love each other. Amen. You can love each other without loving God. Now, it's not God love, it's the phileo type of love, the physical type of love. You're so attracted to each other that you just love each other, love each other because you physically attracted and got some characteristic that matches. And so you're walking around so happily, uh, phileo, physical love, and you're jumping and you're running on the beach and you're swinging in the trees. <laughs> and, and boy, everything lovely. You, you just, you, you, eyes married now and you got yourself together and you, and boy, that's just all natural, all physical. You base that love on physicality. And hallelujah, you feeling so good until y'all start disagreeing. And y'all not, you know, nothing is making sense now. The butterflies then turn into bats. You say bats? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right. Now, 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 now your heart, now your heart broken. Anybody ever had a heart broken because your relationship didn't go right? All right, where you fall? You see, you have nowhere to fall. God is not going to leave you. Neither will he forsake you. He will always be there. Even when we leave him, he won't leave us. God tracks us down. He let us fall. And while we fall, and he's there to nurture us back to him. 
So God said the second one is like the first. You got to love your neighbor, but loving your neighbor come through loving God. Amen. Loving human beings come through loving God. You can't force yourself to put up with the behavior of mankind because some people are hateful. Some people are low down. And the only way you can love people like that, you got to be in love with God. Sometimes you'll run to people like that in your own family, your blood. And you know you're supposed to keep loving your family. And sometimes the meanest people in the world, they blind, they don't see at the time. That's why you got to learn how to love God. And so you can keep praying and loving people. Because you can fall out with people. But if you love God, you keep praying for your enemies on and on and on. So when Jesus came, he said, asked them, he said, well, who, he asked the Pharisees, who do you say I am? He asked them one time, they said, well, you're the son of David. Still, they're not saying he's equal with God. He's equal with God. They didn't want to say that. You, you can, every religion on earth beside the Christian, every other one say he's not equal with God. He's not God. That's why their religion don't teach love your enemy because there's no love in them. See, see you, 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 you got some people say, you know, if you go against them, they, won't, they talk about violence. The Son of God came, and this is how he proved he was the Son of God. When Pilate arrested him, listen, church, when Pilate arrested him, and Pilate said, are you a king? And Jesus said, yes, I am, but not of this world. I am a real king. I didn't get voted in. Hey, Amen, somebody. I'm so glad we don't have to vote on God being God. Some will be crazy enough not to vote right. Jesus said, this is how you know I'm God. My followers love me, and I teach them about love. He said, if I, wasn't, uh, if I was a king of this world, and you have me in these bonds and chains, then my servant would be out there fighting. But I taught him how to love. I am a king. But I'm the son of God, equal with God. God is love. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, they are, I'm not fighting. Now, watch this. You remember when Peter was following Jesus? You remember that night in the Garden of Gethsemane? And the soldier, the soldier one of the high priests, I mean, one of the uh, Roman soldiers put, put a hand on Jesus, or reaching for him to get him? What did Peter do? Peter drew his sword. He cut that man here off. Now listen carefully. Now you know he cut the man ear off, but you got to be very skillful to cut somebody ear off. He wasn't aiming for his ear. He wasn't aiming for the ear. All right, listen, church. Peter was not aiming for that man ear. The man probably moved out the way, Marcus, and he caught him by the ear. You imagine if he had cut that man's head off? Jesus would have reached down on the ground. Come on now. I need a church with me. He'd have picked that man's head up, just like he picked the ear up. He got all power in the palm of his hand. He can do anything he want to do. Don't let your imagination think that he couldn't have picked the man's head up. He would have picked that man's whole head up, put it back on his head, and told Peter, look, Peter, the Son of God loves. You can't follow me 
and say you love me, but you want to cut everybody else. Uh, come on, some of y'all catching it. See, here we are as a body of Christ. We say we love God. Well, you can't cut everybody else. You can't cut them up with your words, with your emotions, with your bitterness, and turn back around and say, I love God. Hallelujah. If you love God, it'll show. So it's one thing to be born again. It's another thing to love God. You can't love God just because, you know, just because you're born again don't mean you love God. Boy, I, I can, I, if I had a chair, I'd sit down on that one. Come on now, just because, they said with me, just because you're born again don't mean you love God. That means you're saved. That means you're saved, and all it means now, you got a lot of growing up to do. The old man got to perish. The new man got to come forth. You are saved, but them old habits are still there. Amen. You still got to learn how to love people. I'm pretty sure some of y'all been tested this week. Somebody done push your button. And they, when they push your button, they push your button to see, look, 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 if somebody done riled you up this week or last week or sometime and you all riled up, you thought it was them. It was God pushing your button. And what God was saying, let me see, do you love me? I got this person that's going to push your button. You think it's a person, but I'm going to use them to push your button so I can find out, do you love me? And my God, when they push your button, you told them off. And now God come and brought you back to church Sunday just trying to remind you, you said you love me. But when somebody done you wrong, you couldn't love them. Loving me is loving people. Loving me is being able to hold your peace. I know what you want to say. I know what you want to do, but love overrides your emotion and won't let you do what you want to do, won't let you say what you want to say. Love in God trains us to let our light shine. So, 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 he is a son of God because he's steady working on us. He's working on us. This is how you know God. He's a son of God. He always working on his children. If you have received the Holy Spirit, you have given God permission, access to you, and sometimes he has to, you know, do some certain things to get us our attention. But really, he, we are his children. He chastises. He trains us. So how do I know he's the son of God? Let me tell you how I know he's the son of God. I don't ain't nobody come bringing me some magazine and trying to take me through all these. Listen, I don't need that. I got something better than your magazine, your tower, or your whatever you got there. Listen, I have something called experience. What am I talking about? Experiencing Jesus by way of the Holy Ghost coming alive in my spirit. And by him being alive in my spirit, I know my thinking changed. Amen. I know how, how, and you'll know, once you're saved, you know how you, we should say, I'm not even thinking about what they said 
or I'm not thinking about um, any action they took or anything I said or any action I took. I'm not thinking about it. If you're born again, the Holy Spirit going to make you think about it. This is a great sign. Before you were born again, when you said, I didn't think, I'm not thinking about them, you meant it. You were able to go out. Listen, when you, before, if you're not, when, if, if you wasn't saved and you hurt somebody or got even, you ain't lose no sleep. You didn't have the Holy Spirit saying, now, now, you shouldn't have done that. You didn't have nothing in your spirit. You didn't feel no remorse. You didn't feel no regret. Only thing you felt, well, I, wait a minute. This is what you felt. Wait a minute. I need to go tell them some more. I, I, I forgot to tell them this, and I forgot to tell them that. Amen. I left out this, and I left out that. Now that you're born again, you don't think about I should have told them some more. You think about what you shouldn't have said. Come on now. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the power of God. He is alive. He is the Son of God. He lives in us. There's more than church. God lives in us. We're sitting in this building, but when we walk out in this building, God walking out here with us. And they keep reminding us he is the Son of God in us. And we are God's children like him. And the joy of the Lord, it become our peace. And so everything is based on, is he the son of God? I've I been in, in I've been in so many, over the years, so many discussions where people just going over and over again. Jesus is a great prophet. A prophet. He is one of the prophets. Uh, he, they called him, one time Jesus asked him, he said, who do, let me close today. He said, who do men say that I am? They said, well, you John the Baptist. John the Baptist? You're Jeremiah. Jeremiah? You're Ezekiel, or one of the prophets. They were saying he's everything but the Son of God. Then Peter then Jesus, said, but, then Jesus said, but now to his disciples, this is important that we get this. He said to his disciples, we, us. He said, who do you? But it's a powerful question today. Who do you say I am? And Peter opened up by the way of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon Peter. He said, you are the son of the living God. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood didn't give you that. That didn't come by way of flesh and blood. It didn't reveal it unto you. My Father, which is in heaven, gave you revelation. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. We shouldn't be guessing as Christians. We shouldn't be persuaded by other religions. Jesus is equal with God. He is the Son of God. Glory be the God. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be the God. Glory be the God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Watch this. We're closing. Take me to John. The de I told you the devil has been trying everything in his power. <laughs> Let me share something with you. Devil been trying everything in his power to uh, kind of throw me on track. Uh, but what he don't know, I ain't never been on track. <laughs> hey Amen. So if I'm not on track, now what I mean by I've never been on track, I don't have a routine. I'm going to get up here. I'm just going to flow in the Holy Ghost. And 
if, if, if he can't throw them off track because there's no track to be on. Right. Now, you know, the, uh, earlier in the message I asked, I said, uh, you know, I asked for a script and didn't find it, and then so I quoted it, and we went through it. Uh, I don't have to be on track there. You, you, what I quote, you go find it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, look at this, and let's close. Let me show you why he's the son of God. He says, um, they, in verse 19, we're in John 5, 19 again, 5 and 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son, of, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever the, he doeth, these also do the Son likewise. All right, now watch this. For the Father loved the Son and showed him all what things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that you may, watch it, that you may what? Marvel. All right, now watch this. Watch this. This is how you know he's God's son, and he's equal with God. For as the Father, God can do this, uh -huh. as the Father raised up the dead and quickened, that means bring the dead alive, yes. then even so the Son can raise up the dead. Jeremiah couldn't do that. Muhammad can't do that. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Ezekiel couldn't do that. You got to be God to raise up the dead. Jesus equal with God. He said, just like you've seen the Father raise up the dead, his son can raise up the dead. When Jesus went to Lazarus' grave and said, Lazarus, get up, every Every, every blind man, every deaf man, everybody in the world ought to knew if you told that man come from the grave, you God. He said it with a loud voice, come forth, Lazarus. Lazarus came out the grave with the grave clothes on. Let him know I, I was really in the grave. He had, you don't come out no grave wrapped in grave clothes unless you was in the grave. All right, now watch what he says. Look what he says, and we're done. He says, I said we're done. We might be done. We might not. <laughs> I don't know. Let me stop for a few minutes, then I'll, I'll go. Because sometimes, you know, you have members in the church, they, they got something to go do. And they, and they want you to be, get this thing over with. <laughs> Let me tell you, this more, this not a thing. This is life. And sometimes you got to fight against some spirit because they got, they going to go do what they want to do. And I'm all I want to say, if you got to go, get up and go. Hallelujah. You know, uh, Paul preached one time so long, the man was sitting on the ledge. He fell asleep and fell down. Broken neck and killed himself. <laughs> Called Paul, preach a long sermon. Amen. So Paul went down and woke him up and kept on preaching. <laughs> you read it, you'll see it. But I'm not going to preach that long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look what he says. Y'all put a verse 21 again. For as the Father, this is making him equal with God. Y'all see it, verse 21? For as the Father raised up the dead and brought him the dead alive and quickened them, brought them alive, even so the son quickened whom he will. Watch this. For, verse 22, for the father judge no man. Watch what he says. But he has committed all judgment. Oh my God. Hallelujah. He said, that's my son. He equal. God said, I don't judge. My son judge. Amen. You want to see the judge? You can't see God. You have to see Jesus. Amen. Look what he says. Verse 33. Uh, see that? The devil is so busy, I don't know how he flipped me over to chapter 6. <laughs> Verse 
Y'all, y'all all say it together, congregation. Say, pastor, pastor. Devil, devil, was never on track. So he need to quit trying to throw me off. All right, go back to five and 20. Y'all saying 23, that's why I'm going back to 22. All right, 22 again. For the father judged no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the son. 23. That all men should honor, that all men should, that all men should, the son. Give God a praise right there. Watch this. Not, 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 we're not through with it. Look at verse 23. That all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, honor not the Father which have sent him. Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is, he is God. Most of y'all that are sitting here today, you agree. There's a lot of people that are watching is falling out their chairs because it is messing up their religion that Jesus is God. That means everything they ever learned, they got to throw it away. If Jesus is God, then they're following, the wrong, they're following the wrong religion. They messed up. They got to prove he's not God. So what happened today for those who really is uh, sacrilegious and don't believe in Jesus, these scriptures are, is, is just detrimental. If you don't honor the Son as you honor the Father, because they're equal with the Father, the father made him the judge, and he's not the judge. He can raise the dead just like the father. They don't like these scriptures. But those that have been born again, those that have been wrapped up, those that have been tied up with God, those that have the Holy Spirit, we shout that he's God. We glorify that he's God. We glorify he's the truth, the way, and the life. We magnify him. Come on, somebody help me celebrate the one and only true living God, Jesus Christ. Give him a shout praise. He's God all by himself. All right. What has this said today? There is no other way to get to God the Father, except through Jesus. You can't get, you can't see Jehovah God unless you go through Jesus. And all the people in the world, a lot of them just falling out and crying like they babies. There got to be another way. Okay, everybody keep leaning and looking at me. They're crying like they three-year-old. There got to be more than one way. There got to be another way. Why do you need another way? All right, everybody listen. Why do you need another way? Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something about a one-way street. It simply means you can't get lost. Y'all, I hope y'all got that spiritually. Because Jesus is a one-way street. Can't none of us get lost? Come on, somebody. Because that is one way. And Jesus said, I am the, I am the way, the truth, and the life and nobody get to my father. Give him a shout praise. Come on, magnify the Lord with me.
There was a song years ago. I don't know that the praise team quite know it. Um, that song goes, I don't know, Sister Johnson, you remember it. If you do, I'm going to have y'all sing it. If you, and if you don't know all the words, just sing the one you know. <laughs> Matter of fact, y'all going up there, I'll introduce the song when, when you get up there. Amen. The song, you know the old song, it's called, What Is This That Got Me Acting Strange? What is this that keep me running on in Jesus' name? Whatever it is, it won't let me hold my peace. It got me loving my enemy. <laughs> Amen, somebody. What is this? I'll tell you what it is, the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Hallelujah. Glory be the God. Y'all come on out of that corner. Y'all going to do it. Y'all going to do it. Come on, give them a hand. They're going to do it. Y'all got it. What is this? Got me feeling so good right now. What is this? What is this? Makes me run on anyhow. Whatever it is. Oh, it won't look there, look there. You got it.
what's that? I still have joy. Go ahead. Mm. I still have joy. Out of all the things I've been, I still have joy. That's going to be back to the trailer yard. <laughs> I still have joy. I still have joy. Still have say, I still have joy. Yes, I still have joy. Out of all the things I've been through, I still have joy. I still have, I still have joy. Still have joy. Out of all. One more time all around the room, say, I still have, I still have joy, I still have joy, out of all the things I've been through, I still have joy, Hallelujah. glory to God. Amen. If you still have joy, give God a praise after all that you've been through. I still have joy. Amen. Let's all stand. Glory be to God. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, share it with me. Jesus is Lord of all. Our risen Savior. Amen. If these scriptures today have not proven that he's God. It has proven it. That's through the written word. Listen, through the written word, God has shown us through the written word that he is equal with God. The other way he shows us is through new birth. Not writing anymore but he shows us by coming alive in us. And then what happening, what happened inside of us matches up then with the scriptures. He is a spirit, not just a written word, God is a spirit. And if you're not saved today, he wanna get in your spirit. He wanna be your savior. He wants you to experience him in your personal lives. Many of us have already done that. And we can tell you, oh, what a joy it is to be born again. He proved that he is the son of God by abiding in us. So if there be any today that have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to be bold and come down today and receive him as your Savior. And if there are any here today and you have already Give your life to Christ and you want to come and be a part of this ministry. God is certainly, you know, speaking to you. This church family is warmly ready to embrace you. So if you be one or the other, one or the other, for salvation or for new membership, be bold wherever you're standing. Make this your day to be part of this local family. At the end of the day, be bold in Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You may be seated in his presence. Give God an awesome hand of praise. <laughs> praise God. If we have anyone here at this time, uh, let me see your hand if you're with us worshiping with us for the very first time. Let me see your hand today. First time worshiping with us. Anyone today?